Marco Polo was a Venetian merchant, explorer, and writer who is best known for his travels to Asia in the 13th century. He was born in Venice, Italy in 1254, and at the age of 17, he set out on a journey with his father and uncle to explore the East. During his travels, Marco Polo visited many countries in Asia, including China, India, and Persia. He spent several years in the court of Kublai Khan, the Mongol Emperor of China, where he served as a government official and a diplomat. Marco Polo's accounts of his travels, known as, The Travels of Marco Polo, were written in the form of a memoir and became one of the most important travelogues of the Middle Ages. His descriptions of the people, customs, and cultures of the East were widely read and helped to promote trade and cultural exchange between Europe and Asia. Born in Venice, Marco learned the mercantile trade from his father and his uncle, Niccolo in Mafio, who traveled through Asia and met Kublai Khan. In 1269, they returned to Venice to meet Marco for the first time. The three of them embarked on an epic journey to Asia, exploring many places along the Silk Road until they reached Cathay, China. They were received by the royal court of Kublai Khan, who was impressed by Marco's intelligence and humility. Marco was appointed to serve as Khan's foreign emissary, and he was sent on many diplomatic missions throughout the empire and Southeast Asia, such as in present-day Burma, India, Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Vietnam. As part of this appointment, Marco also traveled extensively inside China, living in the emperor's lands for 17 years and seeing many things that had previously been unknown to Europeans. Around 1291, the Polos also offered to accompany the Mongol princess Kokochin to Persia, they arrived around 1293. After leaving the princess, they traveled overland to Constantinople and then to Venice, returning home after 24 years. At this time, Venice was at war with Genoa. Marco was captured and imprisoned by the Genoans after joining the war effort and dictated his stories to Rusticello da Pisa, a cellmate. He was released in 1299, became a wealthy merchant, married, and had three children. He died in 1324 and was buried in the Church of San Lorenzo in Venice. Though he was not the first European to reach China, Marco Polo was the first to leave a detailed chronicle of his experience. This account of the Orient provided the Europeans with a clear picture of the East's geography and ethnic customs, and was the first Western record of porcelain, gunpowder, paper money, and some Asian plants and exotic animals. His travel book inspired Christopher Columbus and many other travelers. There is substantial literature based on Polo's writings, he also influenced European cartography, leading to the introduction of the Fra Mauro map. Marco Polo was born in 1254 in Venice. His first known ancestor was a great uncle, Marco Polo, the older, from Venice, who lent some money and commanded a ship in Constantinople. Andrea, Marco's grandfather, lived in Venice in Contrada San Felice, he had three sons, Marco, the older, Mafio and Niccolo, Marco's father. Some Croatian sources claim Polo's ancestors to be of far Dalmatian origin. Marco Polo is most often mentioned in the archives of the Republic of Venice as Marco Paolo di Confinio Sancti Iohannis Chrysostomi, which means Marco Polo of the Contrada of St. John Chrysostom Church. However, he was also nicknamed Milioni during his lifetime, which in Italian literally means, million. In fact, the Italian title of his book was Il Libro di Marco Polo Detto Il Milioni, which means, the book of Marco Polo, nicknamed, Milioni. According to the 15th-century humanist Giovanni Battista Ramusio, his fellow citizens awarded him this nickname when he came back to Venice because he kept on saying that Kublai Khan's wealth was counted in millions. More precisely, he was nicknamed Messer Marco Milioni, Mr. Marco Millions. However, since also his father Niccolo was nicknamed Milioni, 19th-century philologist Luigi Foscolo Benedetto was persuaded that Milioni was a shortened version of Emilioni and that this nickname was used to distinguish Niccolo's and Marco's branch from other Polo families. Early Life and Asian Travel Mosaic of Marco Polo displayed in the Palazzo Doria Tursi, Genoa, Italy. In 1168, his great-uncle, Marco Polo, borrowed money and commanded a ship in Constantinople. His grandfather, Andrea Polo of the parish of San Felice, had three sons, Mafio, yet another Marco, and the traveler's father Niccolo. This genealogy, described by Ramusio, is not universally accepted as there is no additional evidence to support it. His father, Niccolo Polo, a merchant, traded with the Near East, becoming wealthy and achieving great prestige. Niccolo and his brother Mafio set off on a trading voyage before Marco's birth. In 1260, Niccolo and Mafio, while residing in Constantinople, then the capital of the Latin Empire, foresaw a political change, 
they liquidated their assets into jewels and moved away. According to the travels of Marco Polo, they passed through much of Asia, and met with Kublai Khan, a Mongol ruler and founder of the Yuan dynasty. Their decision to leave Constantinople proved timely. In 1261 Michael VIII Palaiologos, the ruler of the Empire of Nicaea, took Constantinople, promptly burned the Venetian quarter and re-established the Byzantine Empire. Captured Venetian citizens were blinded, while many of those who managed to escape perished aboard overloaded refugee ships fleeing to other Venetian colonies in the Aegean Sea. Almost nothing is known about the childhood of Marco Polo until he was 15 years old, except that he probably spent part of his childhood in Venice. Meanwhile, Marco Polo's mother died, and an aunt and uncle raised him. He received a good education, learning mercantile subjects including foreign currency, appraising, and the handling of cargo ships, he learned little or no Latin. His father later married Floridice Polo, ne Trevisan. In 1269, Niccolo and Mafio returned to their families in Venice, meeting young Marco for the first time. In 1271, during the rule of Doge Lorenzo Tipolo, Marco Polo, at 17 years of age, his father, and his uncle set off for Asia on the series of adventures that Marco later documented in his book. They sailed to Acre and later rode on their camels to the Persian port Hormuz. During the first stages of the journey, they stayed for a few months in Acre and were able to speak with Archdeacon Tadaldo Visconti of Piacenza. The Polo family, on that occasion, had expressed their regret at the long lack of a pope, because on their previous trip to China they had received a letter from Kublai Khan to the Pope, and had thus had to leave for China disappointed. During the trip, however, they received news that after 33 months of vacation, finally, the conclave had elected the new Pope and that he was exactly the Archdeacon of Acre. The three of them hurried to return to the Holy Land, where the new Pope entrusted them with letters for the Great Khan, inviting him to send his emissaries to Rome. To give more weight to this mission he sent with the Polos, as his legates, two Dominican fathers, Guglielmo of Tripoli and Nicola of Piacenza. They continued overland until they arrived at Kublai Khan's place in Chengdu, China, then known as Cathay. By this time, Marco was 21 years old. Impressed by Marco's intelligence and humility, Khan appointed him to serve as his foreign emissary to India and Burma. He was sent on many diplomatic missions throughout his empire and in Southeast Asia, such as in present-day Indonesia, Sri Lanka and Vietnam, but also entertained the Khan with stories and observations about the lands he saw. As part of this appointment, Marco traveled extensively inside China, living in the emperor's lands for 17 years. Kublai initially refused several times to let the Polos return to Europe, as he appreciated their company and they became useful to him. However, around 1291, he finally granted permission, entrusting the Polos with his last duty, accompany the Mongol princess Kokochen, who was to become the consort of Argan Khan, in Persia, see narrative section, after leaving the princess, the Polos traveled overland to Constantinople. They later decided to return to their home. They returned to Venice in 1295, after 24 years, with many riches and treasures. They had traveled almost 15,000 miles, 24,000 kilometers. Genoese captivity and later life. Marco Polo returned to Venice in 1295 with his fortune converted into gemstones. At this time, Venice was at war with the Republic of Genoa. Polo armed a galley equipped with a trebuchet to join the war. He was probably caught by Genoans in a skirmish in 1296, off the Anatolian coast between Adana and the Gulf of Alexandretta, and not during the Battle of Perzola, September 1298, off the Dalmatian coast, a claim which is due to a later tradition, 16th century recorded by Giovanni Battista Ramusio. He spent several months of his imprisonment dictating a detailed account of his travels to a fellow inmate, Rusticello da Pisa, who incorporated tales of his own as well as other collected anecdotes and current affairs from China. The book soon spread throughout Europe in manuscript form, and became known as The Travels of Marco Polo, Italian title, Il Milioni, lit. The Million, deriving from Polo's nickname, Milioni. Original title in Franco-Italian, Livres de Merveilles du Monde. It depicts the Polo's journeys throughout Asia, giving Europeans their first comprehensive look into the inner workings of the Far East, including China, India, and Japan. Polo was finally released from captivity in August 1299, and returned home to Venice, where his father and uncle in the meantime had purchased a large palazzo in the zone named Contrada San Giovanni Crisostomo, Corte del Milion. For such a venture, the Polo family probably invested profits from trading, and even many gemstones they brought from the East. 
the company continued its activities and Marco soon became a wealthy merchant. Marco and his uncle Mafio financed other expeditions, but likely never left Venetian provinces, nor returned to the Silk Road in Asia. Sometime before 1300, his father Niccolo died. In 1300, he married Donata Badoer, the daughter of Vitali Badoer, a merchant. They had three daughters, Fantina, married Marco Bragadin, Bellela, married Bertuccio Quirini, and Moreta. Pietro de Bono philosopher, doctor and astrologer based in Padua, reports having spoken with Marco Polo about what he had observed in the vault of the sky during his travels. Marco told him that during his return trip to the South China Sea, he had spotted what he describes in a drawing as a star, shaped like a sack, in Latin, ut sacco, with a big tail, magna habens cotum, most likely a comet. Astronomers agree that there were no comets sighted in Europe at the end of the 13th century, but there are records about a comet sighted in China and Indonesia in 1293. Interestingly, this circumstance does not appear in Polo's Book of Travels. Peter de Bono kept the drawing in his volume, Conciliator Differentiarum, Quae Inter Philosophis et Medicos Versantor. Marco Polo gave Pietro other astronomical observations he made in the Southern Hemisphere, and also a description of the Sumatran rhinoceros, which are collected in the conciliator. In 1305 he is mentioned in a Venetian document among local sea captains regarding the payment of taxes. His relation with a certain Marco Polo, who in 1300 was mentioned with riots against the aristocratic government, and escaped the death penalty, as well as riots from 1310 led by Bahamonte Tipolo and Marco Quirini among whose rebels were Jacobello and Francesco Polo from another family branch, is unclear. Polo is clearly mentioned again after 1305 in Mafio's testament from 1309 to 1310, in a 1319 document according to which he became owner of some estates of his deceased father, and in 1321, when he bought part of the family property of his wife Donata. Death San Lorenzo Church in the Sestier of Castello, Venice, where Polo was buried. The photo shows the church as it is today, after the 1592 rebuilding. Plaque on Teatro Malabran, which was built upon Marco Polo's house. In 1323, Polo was confined to bed, due to illness. On the 8th of January 1324, despite physicians' efforts to treat him, Polo was on his deathbed. To write and certify the will, his family requested Giovanni Giustiniani, a priest of San Procolo. His wife, Donata, and his three daughters were appointed by him as co-executrices. The church was entitled by law to a portion of his estate. He approved of this and ordered that a further sum be paid to the convent of San Lorenzo, the place where he wished to be buried. He also set free Peter, a Tartar servant, who may have accompanied him from Asia, and to whom Polo bequeathed 100 lire of Venetian denarii. He divided up the rest of his assets, including several properties, among individuals, religious institutions, and every guild and fraternity to which he belonged. He also wrote off multiple debts including 300 lire that his sister-in-law owed him, and others for the convent of San Giovanni, San Paolo of the Order of Preachers, and a cleric named Friar Benvenuto. He ordered 220 soldi be paid to Giovanni Giustiniani for his work as a notary and his prayers. The will was not signed by Polo but was validated by the then-relevant, signum manus, rule, by which the testator only had to touch the document to make it legally valid. Due to the Venetian law stating that the day ends at sunset, the exact date of Marco Polo's death cannot be determined, but according to some scholars it was between the sunsets of 8 and the 9th of January, 1324. Biblioteca Marciana, which holds the original copy of his testament, dates the testament on the 9th of January, 1323, and gives the date of his death at some time in June 1324. Polo related his memoirs orally to Rusticello da Pisa while both were prisoners of the Geneva Republic. Rusticello wrote Devisement du Monde in Franco-Venetian. The idea probably was to create a handbook for merchants, essentially a text on weights, measures and distances. The oldest surviving manuscript is in Old French, heavily flavored with Italian. According to the Italian scholar Luigi Foscolo Benedetto, which he corrected by comparing it with the somewhat more detailed Italian of Giovanni Battista Ramusio, together with a Latin manuscript in the Biblioteca Ambrosiana. Other early important sources are, Ramusio's Italian translation first printed in 1559, and, a 15th-century Latin manuscript kept at Toledo, Spain. Another old French polo manuscript, dating to around 1350, is held by the National Library of Sweden. 
One of the early manuscripts, Ider Marci Pauli Venetti, was a translation into Latin made by the Dominican brother Francesco Papino in 1302, just a few years after Marcos returned to Venice. Since Latin was then the most widespread and authoritative language of culture, it is suggested that Rusticello's text was translated into Latin for a precise will of the Dominican order, and this helped to promote the book on a European scale. The first English translation is the Elizabethan version by John Frampton, published in 1579, the most noble and famous travels of Marco Polo, based on Santella's Castilian translation of 1503, the first version in that language. The published editions of Polo's book rely on single manuscripts, blend multiple versions together, or add notes to clarify, for example in the English translation by Henry Yule. The 1938 English translation by A. C. Mole and Paul Pelliot is based on a Latin manuscript found in the library of the Cathedral of Toledo in 1932, and is 50% longer than other versions. The popular translation published by Penguin Books in 1958 by R. E. Latham works several texts together to make a readable whole. While some scholars have questioned the accuracy of Marco Polo's accounts, his book remains an important historical document and a fascinating account of life in the 13th century.